Thanks for tuning in to the Joss and Crowd podcast, where we chat about photography, business, life, and so much more. I'm your host, Jocelyn. Today's topic is gratitude. It's one of my favorite things to talk about, and I cannot wait to share this all with you. So buckle up. It's going to be a lot of information. And I'm really excited that it is actually my first episode, and I'm grateful for all of my listeners and the more that are going to be coming. So a little bit about how I found and practice gratitude. When I first started with my photography business, I was doing it part-time. I was doing weddings and seniors, and I was also working other jobs. I'd worked in restaurants and corporate world, and it was all like super overwhelming because I really just wanted to be a business. And one day I just said, screw it. I had a lot of things that had been going on in my life. And I was like, I'm just going to be a full-time photographer. Uh, Side note, I talk about this all in depth in my book, and I'm sure I'll talk about it in future podcasts. But um, I took a leap and decided that I was going to go full-time with my business. I had no plan. I had no idea. Uh, I just knew what I needed to do was not what I was currently doing. So I went down the rabbit hole and listened to every YouTube video, was reading every book, you name it. I was trying to absorb all the things I could. And one of the common denominators in everything I was listening to was you had to find gratitude. You have to find gratitude. And I'm like, well, I am thankful. I am thankful. I'm thankful. Like, I don't get it. Like, why is everybody talking about this thing, gratitude, as if it was some portal to some universe that I didn't know existed? And... Pinterest has been like really big around that time. I know Pinterest is still huge, but this is like one at first had started taking off. And there was this idea pin where you can put a jar, I think it was like a mason jar, where you just write something down that you're thankful for that was really good and exciting in your life and stick it in the jar. So you collect all these little notes of things that you love doing. So I was like, I can totally do that. So I had this jar. uh, It was really funny. I had saved this jar. It was a cherry jar when I worked at an ice cream shop. My very first job, it was maraschino cherries. And I say this jar because I loved it. And I was like, I'm going to create this jar and this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to put notes in there. And I colored a piece of paper that said the good life, uh, which was inspired by the song One Republic and Good Life. And every time something exciting happened, I'd come home and I'd stick it in the jar. Well, on the last day of the year, I ended up going and reading all of those things. And it was such an amazing experience to go through and see all the good things that had happened in a year and not remember some of them and then be like, oh yeah, I remember how great that was and the feeling I had when I wrote that down. So I decided to do it again the next year. I didn't do a jar. I ended up just writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them in a little bag. And then the third year, I was like, I have to keep doing this, but there's got to be a way that I can write it and like maybe a three ring binder or some type of journal. Uh, Simultaneously, I was also looking for my friend's Christmas gifts that year. And I discovered that there were gratitude journals. I don't know how I didn't know that, but I'm like, oh, I got to get my friend's gratitude journals. This is going to be great. We can write down five things that we're thankful for every day and find gratitude in it. Uh, I don't know if my friends ever completed it. You'll have to let me know. But I completed mine and I was super excited. So the next year I did it again. I'm like, I need to create my own journal because I always look at something. I'm like, oh, I can make that. I can create that. And so I put it on my list of like create and publish a gratitude journal because it was so incredible. And although the first year or two, I didn't go back and read all of them, I did skim through. And I realized that one day when I'm gone and somebody's going through my belongings, they're going to find all these gratitude journals of me that show every year all the things that I was thankful for. And they might find their names on the pages. Uh, I'm sure if they're going through my belongings, they're definitely going to find my <laughs> find their names on my pages. But it was absolutely something incredible. I ended up sitting with my dog. She had passed away in my arms. And that night it was very late. So I couldn't take her anywhere yet to have her cremated. And I was trying to do my nightly bedtime routine. And I'm like, I have to do my gratitude journal. And I had to dig deep. I'm like, I can't do my gratitude journal. My dog just died. I had her for almost 17 years. Like, this is just too hard. And then I was like, no, you need to do your gratitude journal. This is this is not a pass you get today. Like, you have to find things that you're grateful for. So with a very teary face, I wrote, I was thankful for my dog. I was thankful for the life of her. All the things. 
Well, then the next morning, I had dropped her off to be cremated. And on my way home, uh, my aunt had passed away too. So I had another death. And that night, I was trying to find things to be grateful for again too. And I got to thinking, I was like, if I can find gratitude on the worst days of my life, then I should be able to find it even easier on the best days of my life. And I realized that I kept putting off create a gratitude journal. So I got to work. I created and designed and published my gratitude journal. It took me like two or three days and I didn't sleep much. Don't recommend it, but the best way I work sometimes. And I published a gratitude journal. It took off and my customers were absolutely loving it. People were tagging me on it. I still welcome tags. I have four books published now that are on my shop. Even if you don't purchase my gratitude journal, this is not a sales pitch. Find a notebook, find post-its, Find a jar, whatever it is, and spend time finding things that you're grateful for every day. How amazing is it is if you started today and 365 days from now, you will have found 1,825 things to be thankful for in your life on your worst day, on your best day, and all the days in between. It's that simple. Just five, five things. Sometimes I can spend a lot of time writing and I know that some days I spend I actually write more than just five, and some days I struggle to write five. But it's the fact that it's a consistent thing. And what's so incredible about gratitude is is that it forces you to find things that you're grateful for. The first time I did a gratitude journal, I was struggling. I'm like, oh, I'm thankful for my life. I'm thankful for my home. I'm thankful for my friends. I'm thankful for food. I am thankful for my pets. Like it was just kind of semi generic things. And then I was like, okay, well, if I have to do this for a year, I better start looking for smaller things to be thankful for. And then it was, I'm so grateful that I went to this restaurant today to have dinner with my friend. I'm so thankful that my waitress got my order right and that my food was yummy. I'm so thankful for the opportunities that were presented to me that I could make this friendship and that we were able to go to dinner. I am so thankful that I had money from my job so that I could pay for my dinner. I am so thankful for my job. And it just kind of break it down that way and find things with inside of things to be grateful for. And that is essentially what the key of gratitude is. And they've done scientific research and I'm no scientist and I'm no medical professional, but they have actually done research and documentation on how being grateful rewires your brain physically and can help you heal from traumas, just overall change your whole course of your day. So um, I encourage you to find gratitude in something today. I know I'm grateful for you. I know that I'm grateful that I have somebody that took the time to listen to my whole podcast today and that you're going to go out and find something to be grateful for today. If you have a notes app on your phone, if you have a notebook that you carry with you, even on your calendar, just jot down things until you feel like it's time to step it up and have either a journal or something bigger that you can physically see or carry with you. I highly recommend writing things down and not just saying them so that you can get it out and onto paper. But gratitude is something that is vital to my business. It is vital to my life. It is vital for me. There are days, don't get me wrong, that I'm like, oh, I don't have time to do this or I don't feel well. There has actually been a couple of times where I went to bed trying to go to sleep and I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. I can't do my gratitude journal today. And then I will lay in bed and I will be like, no, you need to turn on your light. You need to get your journal and you need to write this down. It takes two minutes. And it's so funny how quickly I'll fall asleep right after that. Gratitude is super important. And I hope that you spend some time finding it today. Well, that's all we have for today's podcast. We thank you so much for joining. And I hope that you have a fantastic day. And we will catch you next time with the Joss and Crowd podcast.